Welcome again to Advanced Social Problems, and this week we're on Mashonis Chapter 6, talking about crime, deviance, and delinquency. Let's start off with how these are defined. Now, this is not an easy task. There are differing definitions. Deviance. Here are a couple of sociological definitions. Socially disapproved behavior, or action that varies from societal norms. It can be positive or negative. Crime. Here are some definitions. All antisocial behavior, uh, acts that violate basic human rights, racism, sexism, imperialism, and anything stemming from these, like murder, uh, acts that are illegal, which stem from definitions of moral or ethical expectations, and acts that are immoral but perhaps not illegal, for example, religious definitions of sin. And delinquency could be defined as crime committed by a juvenile, in most states under 18 years old, or status offenses, crimes committed by juveniles which are illegal for juveniles, but not for adults, like drinking alcohol when you're under age, or truancy. How is crime measured? Usually in one or more of three ways. Uh, first of all, arrest rates, the percent of crimes known to the police for which someone is actually arrested, regardless of conviction later in the courts. Secondly, victimization surveys, national and state surveys, for example, the National Crime Victimization Survey that asks a large sample of the population each year if they have been the victims of different crimes. Now, these statistics differ from arrest rates because they capture those crimes where someone was a victim but chose not to report it to the police, for, for instance, vandalism or rape. And then self-report surveys. These are national and state surveys, usually of different age groups, like teens versus adults, asking, asking to identify those activities they have participated in within a certain period, recent period of time. These differ from victimization surveys because these can capture information on victimless crimes. For example, illegal drug use, vandalism of an abandoned building, things like that. How much crime is there? It's important to understand this kind of question either A, by comparing different groups at a given point in time, like comparing murder rates in Denver and Detroit in 2013, or B, by looking at trends and how much crime there has been over time. Now, what is one of the leading sociological, sociological explanations for criminal behavior? Strain theory. Originally conceived by Robert Merton, strain theory posits that U.S. society promotes the overarching value that everyone has a shot at winning big, that everyone can be successful. It becomes a goal for most everyone to try to gain either economic or political power or both. To uh, have a nice car, a nice house, an important job, to have respect. Strain theory further says that when individuals find that they cannot achieve these goals through legitimate means, then they will use illegitimate means, i.e. crime. For example, theft, burglary, dealing drugs, white-collar crime, and so on. Now, Robert Agnew goes further into his explanation of strain. It results from any kind of bad treatment, divided into three forms. First, being blocked from positively valued goals. Um, this incorporates and advances Merton's theory. For example, anything from financial success to getting into college to getting a girlfriend. Secondly, Someone or something of value has been taken away or is threatened to be taken away. For example, a parent dies. A corporate officer is afraid of losing stock value falling, so they fix prices. And then third, someone is presented with something negative or is threatened with something negative. For example, the child who is abused at home. A teacher threatens to put a student in detention. The strain from any of these leads to negative emotions. For example, anger sadness, depression, frustration. Most people conform to social expectations and have coping mechanisms. For example, anger management, counting to 10, yoga, or even alcohol, uh, turning to a religious leader or a therapist for counseling, etc. Some people lack such coping mechanisms, or the strain is simply too strong for the coping mechanisms they have. When this happens, such people most often choose criminal coping, a way of coping with the strain that is against the law. 
Your book goes into a number of other explanations for crime, but strain theory is really an important explanation, an important theory for research. Now, full disclosure, Bob Agnew was a professor of mine in grad school, so that's one reason why I focus so heavily on strain theory here. But I think it's a sound explanation, and it's worth some thought. So that's crime in a very small nutshell, and Chapter 6 contains a lot of other relevant information that you'll want to be aware of. So be sure to give it a good read, head on over to the discussion forum, and I'll see you online.